Hi traders, welcome to this video. Today I want to show you one of my last trades. It was Pinterest. But before we come to this video, please take a few seconds to read this uh, risk disclaimer. So this video is only for educational pupils. Of course, it is no investment device. Um, you are responsible for your own trading decisions and investment decisions. Okay, so let's dive into uh, the Pinterest trade and um, yeah, let's uh, start with the entry. And I want to show you some screenshots I took uh, during uh, the trade and um, yeah, from, from entry to exit because it explains um, my thoughts and explains how I document um, my trade and later we will also look at the live chart and I want to give you details about the research I did um, about Pinterest so the most exciting part for me because I love research and this is where my passion is and um, yeah let's start with the entry so um, here you can see a screenshot um, I did on uh, the 22nd of September. That was, um, uh, yes, a Tuesday and uh, Pinterest broke out very nicely. You can see that here with a red arrow. So we saw um, a very nice breakout from a little range here. Um, and um, yeah, I bought a Pinterest a little bit late, but that's okay. So um I bought it around uh, nine, uh, 39 uh, US dollars and it was on, on good volume. So you can see here in the um, right corner um, that the volume was up 93%. So I want at least see 50% um, above average volume when I buy into a stock. And that was the case here. And also the RS line was on a new high. And the, the most important thing here, the RS line was on a new high before price. And that shows me how strong the, um, the stock was. You can see here on the top of the chart, you can see the S&P 500 and you can see that the S&P 500 was down and the stock made a new high. So very, very strong. And um, here you can see um, before the range um, was created or developed, you see uh, an up gap. And I think that was an earnings report here and the stock gapped up and then goes sideways for a couple of days and retested the moving average 20 here. So all the things I wanna see um, from a technical side when I buy into a trade. So a very tight range, very good RS rating and a strong RS line and good volume on the day when I buy into the stock. Um, a couple of days later, um, oh no, one day later, that was one day later, sorry. Um, I made uh, this screenshot so and I wrote on choppy like Roku. Roku was uh, or is another position I own. And yeah, you can see here, uh, it looked like a failed breakout. So you can see this reversal bar one day after I bought. And this is always something where I'm a little bit cautious because when I see that the trade is not running directly after I buy it, that's always a sign that um, yeah, something is not, not right. And in that case here, maybe it was a market, it was still down and and um, yeah, the price tried to break out here and um, failed on the, on the first day, but that was okay. So um, my position was um, or showed a profit here, so that that was absolutely okay to hold, and no reason to sell or anything because I expected a much much stronger um, run from Pinterest because it it was uh, such a young company um, with a high growth. Um, in the fundamentals. Okay, so that was the entry. Let's look at the trade progress, what happened next. And um, on 10th of October, I took this screenshot here and I wrote down creeping higher. And um, the creeping higher was, um, yeah, I, I wrote that down because you can see that there was not so much momentum and the prices went higher and higher, but there was not this 
um, this accelerating run, what you expect or what you want to see after you buy a stock. Um, nevertheless, I added to my position here on this strong um, up uh, up day here. It was also on, on higher volume, so good sign that my trade is running into the right direction. And um, yeah, but, but I was not 100% um, satisfied with the trade because it was not... Yeah, not or it did not show such a strong momentum. That was okay for the moment. So uh, in that situation, I owned around 15% in Pinterest. So 15% of my trading capital. And um, yeah, that, that was absolutely okay in that situation. And um, the next screenshot I took 12 days later. And that was the day on... Uh, when um, Snap, so uh, a sister stock from Pinterest, also in the social media business, when they published earnings, and um, that also, um, yeah, brought a, a gap or created a gap for um, Pinterest here. So very nice. Gaps are always a sign of strength, especially when the trend is young and uh, not exhausted. And um, yeah, I made a screenshot here to to um, remind myself about that. And five days later, I made this screenshot, so super strong, but earnings tomorrow. So you can see that Pinterest did not close the gap here, which is always a very good sign. No, it uh, ran higher here, but it will publish or it published earnings one day later. And that's always where I'm a little bit cautious. And um, that's where I sold um, a 20% ahead of the earnings. So to reduce my position, so from 15% to around yeah, 10% or 12% in that case. Um, so I, I reduce my positions a little bit so that I'm uh, able to sleep at the night when uh, Pinterest uh, published earnings. And I also had a nice profit cushion here, so everything was okay. But um, I wanted to reduce here a little bit to have less risk in the stock when Pinterest published earnings. Yeah, and um, the next day um, Pinterest published earnings and gapped up almost 30% here and run much higher on that day. So monster earnings. And that's always the issue when you when you sell um, before earnings and um, you or when you sell um, a part of your position before earnings and then the next day the, the stock um, had monster earnings and a monster reaction, which is much more important to that. A monster reaction to the earnings and and then you have a smaller position. So, of course, you made a lot of money, but in that case, you would have made more money um, if you had hold on to your original position size. But risk comes always first. So, before you think about profits, think about risk. And in that case, it was the absolute right decision to sell a little bit into the strength and uh, took profits a little bit before um, Pinterest published earnings because it's, it, the, the gap uh, could also be a gap down. And in that situation, you, lo uh, you lost a lot of money. So I made videos about gap downs and especially the big gap down and fastly. Um, last year so I look into my YouTube channel and you see the video there so and uh, yeah Pinterest gapped up here monster volume 600% so great reaction to earnings you can see here the earnings at the bottom so over a thousand percent year over year earnings growth and also the uh, the sales growth accelerated so um, from the last quarter um, we will come to this uh, later because um, why I bought the stock Although it had so um, yeah so so little uh, sales growth here, but the sales growth picked up and uh, was up fifty eight percent, so monster uh, results uh, for the quarter. And um, yeah, so after this uh, big gap up, um, the stock goes uh, sideways here, and uh, I wrote on uh, waiting uh, for a new base or something. Um, so and it's it's tried to ba to 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 build a new base here, and it was down on that day. You can see that uh, seven percent, so a lot. Uh, but I still hold on to the stock because I expected much more to come. And then you can see that um, Pinterest retested the EMA twenty one here, so the 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 green line, 
And on that day, I sold 30% of my position. And of course, I did not sold it after the reversal bar. No, I sold it when the position was below the EMA 21. I took the screenshot a little bit later. So in that case, um, I of course think about risk management. So I want to reduce my position size in that case uh, because first I can easily buy back and second when now the position um, yeah, will uh, fall below the EMA 21 here and correct more, I'm out. So this is the first selling part or the first uh, first action to get out of the stock here, but always to give the stock a little bit room because it can reverse and go higher here. And in that case, I sold 30% um, of my um, of my running trade. So and then I think I hold around 10% or something in Pinterest. Um, so then, um, yeah, Pinterest reversed very nicely here. So I sold exactly at the low. Um, what, what, that's not a problem for me because I can buy back any time. And in that case, I added 25% when it reached a new uh, marginal high here. And the volume was bad on that day. So um, that was not perfect. Um, but, I, but I decided to add to the position because I wanted to have more uh, capital in Pinterest at that time, and um, yeah, you must always you must always know my my average entry price was something here around the forty US dollar. So and when I now add added twenty five percent, that means I bought here ten percent. So then I bought uh, here um, another five percent, so fifteen percent position, and in that case. That means I added 25% uh, of my um, last buy here. So I added 2.5% um, yeah, of my capital to Pinterest. So not much. So a very small add um, to the Pinterest position in that case. All right. And then, um, yeah, Pinterest, you can see, goes higher or went higher here. And then... Yeah, Lou or lost lost the momentum here and goes more or less sideways over multiple days. And you can see the market also went sideways here, and the RS line um, turned into a sideways RS line, and that was also uh, that that was not a very nice situation here. And um, then we had the day here when when Pinterest broke out again, and I added also a very small. Uh, position uh, to to my Pinterest um, position here, so not so much, um, but it was a breakout here, and um, I expected that the price will move higher here, and um, that was not the case. So we will see that in the exit. But the most important part, if you or the most important thing, if you if you paramite your position, so if you add it to your position you should always add smaller parts so that your average entry price is not increasing too much. This is very, very important. Otherwise, you get stopped out on the first um, a small correction in the stock. Okay, so the exit. The exit, um, you can see that Pinterest now fell below the um, EMA 21 here. And that was a, the situation when I sold 30%. So I... Um, yeah, I sold um, thirty percent of the of the um, position when um, I saw that um, yeah that Pinterest was not able to reverse very strongly here, and also the market situation was not perfect. So you can see that the market went higher here, but in a very shoppy fashion. I wrote about that in my uh, free newsletter, which I sent out every Sunday, and. All these informations together, um, yeah, lead me to to this decision that I say, okay, I want to get out a little bit, reduce my exposure here, and sold thirty percent of my uh, Pinterest position. And um, yeah, so and a couple on one one day later is that here? Yeah, one day later. So on January the first, uh, I sold the rest. 
so I saw the rest position because you can see it it went went down so it continued to made marginal new lows that's all that's okay and I decided to sold um, the rest of this position here and one thing which is important why I sold here is um, first of all the stock is extended so if you look into the weekly chart and if you look where it's the stock in comparison to the EMA 200 here this black line and if you look that the stock already yeah um, more than doubled here from the lows so from 15 to yeah, 75 uh, US dollar here so that's a huge run and also the market situation when it's getting more choppy I want to reduce my exposure and that's why I took profits here and also important if you look at the at the green line here so the EMA 21 you can see that this is the dominant moving average for Pinterest you can see one maybe two three uh, three times um, or three um, pullbacks to the EMA 21 and every time um, it found support here so that means the people are looking at the EMA 21 here and in that case that's a dominant moving average for me and um, that's why I sell when the stock um, yeah fell or fall below the, the moving average here the dominant moving average in that part and um, yeah and, and that that's why I decided to sell here um, the Pinterest trade I'm not sure if this was the right decision we will see that but for me it is clear the right decision so um, I made around 10 R on that trade so that means I um, made 10 times um, 10 times my initial risk on that trade so that means when my initial risk just as an example is 500 US dollar then I made 5000 US dollar on that trade I personally um, think I could have done much better when I, um, yeah, when I, when I uh, timed my uh, my my um, buys and sells a little bit better. So when I when I added better on the pullback here instead of high prices, and I did not sold so aggressive or something, then I uh, could have done much better. In the Pinterest trade, but 10R is is a very very good um, uh, return for that uh, trade. So um, here's uh, one overview about all the buys and sell um, sells. So um, I will show you that also in the live chart um, at the end of this video when we look at the live chart and where the price is today. And yeah, you can see here. So at the beginning of the trend, I added more aggressively. So that's when I want to push my position, when I increase my position. And then when, um, yeah, before the earnings situation and on the pullback, I reduced a little bit to get out of the risk here. Then I added back to that position. Then I added a very small, um, yeah, a small uh, new part here when it broke out to a new all-time high and then I exited the position on the EMA 21 um, in that trade. Okay, so let's come to the research part. And the research part is always for me the most exciting because research is very important to have a lot of confidence in the trade. So when you hold a trade for multiple weeks or even months and you have to select between 10 or 20 stocks which you want to buy and uh, um, where you want to have a real big position that means you need confidence and research and understanding the business behind Pinterest and to get a feeling for the potential um, of a company and of the trade gives you a lot of confidence uh, or gives me a lot of confidence and helps me and I want to um, also show you my notes and uh, my screenshots which I take and uh, also my thoughts about that the first thing is what I see in Pinterest. So um, I always believe that Facebook has real big problems to grow and innovate. We see that. So they do not grow so much anymore. They have a lot of problems to acquire new users to the platform. So Facebook is not growing. Instagram, yes, it's growing, but uh, has some uh, some problems. Is very specialized on photos and um, has problems to to um, yeah to 
to grow their business into new directions. And they, of course, own WhatsApp, So, but WhatsApp is not a social uh, platform. They have a lot of problems to monetize that. So Facebook has a lot of problems. So that means investors, which are looking for um, exposure and investments in the um, social media business, they do not have so much... Uh, so much opportunities here. So Facebook, yes, but it's a large cap and as I said, not so attractive from the growth perspective. Twitter, yeah, not not so interested. Uh, they have, don't have a running business or not a not a good business model. Um, then you have Snapchat. Yes, Snapchat is growing very fast and um, and I think it's a very unique um, uh, pro- uh, product. So, and um, yeah, and then you have Pinterest, of course, and of course, some social networks in, the, in, in China and in Asia, etc. But I think um, when there are two companies which have a lot of potential in that direction, it's Pinterest and it's Snapchat. So, and Snapchat is now turning also profitable and is growing very fast. And we saw that with the price reaction in the last months. And then what I see in Pinterest is, and um, all the um, earnings reports and letters uh, confirm that is, they they want to become a shopping platform, more and more a shopping platform, and they introduced a new advertising format for shopping, and that was driving the revenue extremely, and there is a very high demand for that new uh, feature, and. Um, they were very stable with the growth, um, advertising growth uh, during the COVID-19 situation. And um, that was highly because of this new shopping ad format. Because now a lot of companies looked to place or looked for a placement of the advertising and their products in this home and living category. And the home and living category is very attractive. So when you stay at home, and uh, you want to buy some new furniture, etc. You get inspiration on Pinterest, and um, when now you you combine this in, this inspiration inspirational character from Pinterest with a shopping feature, so that's 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 a huge opportunity, and that's that's what uh, Pinterest tried to do um, before and during the COVID nineteen situation, and yeah, and that 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 um, drives their ad business. And they say about themselves, they want to become a shopping platform or a catalog, what, what they are saying in their reports. And that's a new new direction. So they don't want to become a second Facebook or a second Instagram where you're sharing photos and text. No, no, they will want to become a gatekeeper for shopping in all this home and living and um, yeah, furniture and um, home improvement um, uh, area so and this is currently um, a situation or a, an area which is benefiting um, um, hugely from from the COVID nineteen um, situation and they also um, wrote in one of their reports that video is driving engagement they 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 try to try to place uh, content video content from. Uh, users and they saw uh, monster monster growth rates in their um, engagement rates um, so monster growth in their engagement rates and uh, this is for the social network engagement and time you spend on the platform that's gold because or that's the revenue because uh, sorry that's currency that's what I want to say because if you if you hold the people longer on your platform and if they are more engaged and clicking clicking more um, on the platform etc you can sell more advertising and you generate more data to personalize the advertising and this is so attractive and that's why why pinterest uh, tries to push all this video content to uh, have better engagement rates on on the platform and um, also monthly active users are growing so and um if if you look at um we will come to this in a minute but if you look at the revenue from pinterest and i i saw it, i said it in the beginning of this video so the revenue was only growing four percent or the sales were only growing um four percent when i bought the stock but the monthly active users were up extremely so i think 39 percent and um 
when you look at social platforms and also on other e-commerce platforms, internet platforms, monthly active users are the number one currency on um, in this business. Because that means 39% um, a growth on monthly active users my, um, means they have 39% more users on a platform which uses the platform and which generate data and see advertising etc and if you can hold them so if you have a good retention strategy to bring them back and to to um yeah to make them loyalty um users then you are you can monetize them over time and this is this is very very important uh, when it comes to social platforms so now we will go a little bit through to my research and what I or where I took screenshots shots here. So you can see here from the earnings report the revenue which yeah moved down in the last quarter, so from sixty two percent to four percent, and that was a COVID nineteen situation here when it moves to four uh, percent. And um, I wrote down here stronger than Facebook, Snap, and Twitter, but it was um, also down here especially in the US market, you must always have in mind when, when you look at, at those um, international companies, they are making the most money in US and maybe Europe, but international international is always growing very fast, but they are not generating a lot of revenue uh, internationally and especially not in Asia or Lat Latin America where, where uh, people do not spend so much time on the platforms and uh, so, so much money on the platforms and where they cannot generate so much revenue. And you can see that here, 232 million US dollar revenue in the US and only 41 international. And that's a, a big growth here. So uh, it's, it's, it's in the beginning of the international um, or yeah, international rollout here and monetization strategies. But uh, US is only the, the main uh, business here for uh, Pinterest. And here's exactly what, what what I said. You know, monthly active users, you can see they, they were always um, flat here. So 30%, 28, 26, another 26. So and um, so very stable growth. And then they exploded here to the upside with uh, 39%. And uh, that was a breakout, you can see. So they, they gained a lot of attraction um, during the COVID-19 situation. And they were able to grow, especially also in the US. So more people are using their platform. And um, when you see such a situation where more people using a platform, but they are not generating uh, more revenue with them, that mostly means that their ad business is not running that way that they expected. Um, but more people are looking at the ads. And also that is much more attractive um, for um, yeah for advertisers when they start to book advertising again. Okay, so then I went to the I think there was a shareholder letter here and um, yeah note, noted or make some notes here about the growth and um, yeah and and the the, the MAU, so the monthly active user growth here, so good but slower in future. So they, they, they expected a little bit slower growth in future. And here was a situation when I saw that with this video content thing. Um, so you can see that they wrote something about video and while unique uh, video uploads grow over 600%. So that means 600% more video upload content. Um, from people on the platform and also the views grow 150%. That always means more time on the platform. So if you if you see more videos and you are more, longer um, or you see videos longer, that always means you spend more time on the platform and that means more advertising revenue. Um, maybe not today, but also in future. So then um, here's all the things about this uh, shopping and shopping and, and catalog um, future and, and vision they have. So you can see also here Shopify integration, uh, which is also 
uh, one or business opportunity shopping shopify as one of the biggest um, e-commerce platforms for mid-sized businesses so they can very very easily book advertising on the pinterest platform and this is great so if you see um if you see that new advertising formats are yeah are in a high demand that that means they can drive revenue and and future um yeah so and then um here you can see pinterest is quickly becoming a compelling digital di uh, a digital analog of of uh, of yeah inspiration and and the catalog and um a catalog about furnitures etc so they are going into this direction uh, that's a, what i wrote down here and um yeah some some more notes i had and i added here so shopping it's all about shopping inspiration consideration per case so you make per case decisions on the platform here and every time you purchase an item and people are deciding to buy something on the pinterest platform that means new revenue and new sales for pinterest so it's a very um, very good situation maybe one word why pinterest and not instagram is doing that business instagram is a photo community and it's all about lifestyle and fashion and and vacation photos etc but pinterest is very specialized in this home and living and architecture um, area and that's why they are benefiting so much from from that at the moment um yeah so then another screenshot here from uh from the user growth uh what i wrote down and then i also looked into the other platforms here uh, that was twitter at that time and twitter grow their um monetize monetizable uh, daily active users so they have an own definition of active users here they grew them by 34 percent um pinterest was able to grow them by 39 percent but you can see pinterest uh, uh, twitter revenue was down 19 percent and the revenue from pinterest was up four percent so they are doing better than twitter and also facebook if you look at facebook here so advertising revenue were up here um 10 percent, which is very very good but you must see the 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 yeah the the difference between a small pinterest and a mega big um mature company like facebook and you can see that they if you look here at the facebook daily active users they increased 12 percent and again um pinterest was able to grow them by 39 percent, so much much stronger growth but facebook was better in the business numbers here and um that's mostly or that's 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 because they have a mature business so they optimize their business for years and years and years and uh, it's a cash cow so facebook is a cash cow and pinterest is is a is an aggressive growth company um yeah so then i also um um listened to some um earnings call and uh, not earnings calls but presentations here and the cfo talked about um their plans and their vision to become uh, a shopping um platform so shopping ads driver of the next years that's what he said about uh, the new um the new advertising format and then also shopping is the place for pinterest so they see them really in this shopping um community or shopping e-commerce direction so in that uh, in that way so in all this information when i when i hear when i hear them um i i i i i um when i hear them and think about them they they create a picture in my mind about the potential of the company and you can see they are very young they are aggressive they are growing they invent new ad formats they try to um try to grow international so they are trying to make new business here they have new integrations with shopify etc so a lot of potential growth or a lot of potential uh, growth opportunities for the future and that's what i'm seeing here and maybe also all the uh, institutions which are buying the stock so then 
Um, that that was here on uh, October 29th, and that was the situation when the the next earnings report with a monster get up, a gap up of 30% uh, appeared. So, and you can see, especially, or you can see what I expected here when I bought the stock at 4% revenue growth. The next quarter was monster. It was, I think, the best quarter of Pinterest ever. So and um, that's exactly what I, what what I, what I expected here. You know, new good shopping ad formats, etc. Now the the situation of the COVID or the COVID situation eases a little bit. So more marketing spendings is possible from from companies, and they book the new format. And then you can see this explosive, um, yeah, explosive move here in the sales numbers year over year. And you can look back here. They go from 250 million uh, to um, 370 um, million uh, in revenue. And they also, you can see here, international were able to double or more than double their revenues from international. So very very strong numbers. EPS was up over thousand percent. And also the estimates for the for the next years in Pinterest were up strongly, and that's uh, that's a sign that the business is running here. All right, so let's look at the live chart. Um, let's switch uh, to the live um, chart um, platform here, and um, so I'm using Trading View here, and. I, I want to show you one thing here, and this is what what I'm always talking about. This is a young company. They had their IPO in 2019, and they built or the price built this wonderful IPO base pattern here. You can see the stock corrected here very nicely, so it shook out a lot of people and gave the institutions the opportunities to sell their uh, their shares. And then, um, yeah, Pinterest made this huge rally to the all-time high, to the IPO high that was here. And then you can see um, something like like a volatile situation here. And that's normally uh, that that's normal. You, you see that very often after a long IPO base, that the stock is uh, shaking around and then break out to new all-time highs. And that was a situation when when I bought into Pinterest here. After this very small and very nice, um, yeah, I would call them flat, flat base or whatever. And then you can see it broke out, retested that and then run higher and higher and higher. And then, yeah, went sideways here and then went down. Of course, if you now look at the weekly chart here, um, you can say, well, hmm, um, there is a lot of potential or to the upside. Maybe they reach the 100 level here. Of course, it could be. But when I look at you know when I look at the distance here from the EMA 200, that's the black line here, uh, in the weekly chart, you can see it was overextended here, it was 100% above the uh, above this black line here, and that's always when I'm looking, yeah, to to not to sell directly, but when I'm looking to or when I'm more cautious, so that that always uh, shows me a red flag. And what I also saw here was this, was this creation of, of a round top. So you can see the prices are turning around here. They build a round, I would not call them top, but they, they, yeah, they, 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 they turn around at the time. You can see that here also in the daily chart. And that's also something, you know, where, where I personally say and see, or when I'm getting more cautious, because that always shows me that people are selling aggressively around this um, 70 US dollar number. And um, what you can also, or what you should not forget, is this big bar here. So on the highest volume ever, this also shows you exhaustion. And then you can see very low volume here all the way. And then also the RS line was turning around a little bit. So not not the best situation. That's that's why I decided to sell here, and maybe that that one here. So to add to a new all time high here, maybe that was a little bit too greedy or a little bit too, um, yeah, 
uh, yeah, w w was not was not the best decision here, but it was okay because I also uh, I always add on new highs and I, I always add just a few shares, um, so not aggressively in that situation, and um, yeah, so that that was absolutely okay from my side, and um, of course when we now look into the future. A little bit and try to to think about what what could happen next so you can see that that pinterest stayed here below the 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 green line so below the ema21 and the ema21 is turning sideways or down and and acted here as a resistance and um you can see that you now have a new um yeah, resistance level and that's around 72 here and I would expect that the stock uh, would go sideways here maybe create a new base and then maybe try to break out a second time um, or it's another possibility would also be to retest the EMA 65 here and to build a longer base before um, maybe breaking out so and I don't want I don't want to have dead money and dead money is always the situation when the stock is going sideways and you when you have committed 15 20 or 30 percent of your capital in a stock which is going sideways you are losing opportunities and that's why I also decided to to um, to sell uh, Pinterest here because I can put that money into other stocks now. And uh, I can easily buy back uh, when the sh when the stock uh, will uh, turn into a new into a new trend here, and um, yeah, we will see if that's the case in the ne in the next weeks or not. I personally believe the stock has a lot of potential also in the future, um, and I will definitely keep them on my watch list. But I'm also um, I'm also a trader, and I'm also I'm trading other stocks and I don't hang on to a stock too long. So and if you see, you know, I took the first buy here around 39 and I sold them uh, completely here. And that means I made um, 70% in, uh, in, in a couple of months here. And um, that's absolutely my, or that, that's absolutely in, um, the the return I want to see so I I I always have a mind to make a return uh, in the stock between fifteen hundred percent and six to nine months and um, yeah in that case it was was much faster and um, that's great so and um, um, the the goal is not always to make the most money possible in a trade so you want to have a decent profit. So you want to have an above average profit and a good profit. And when you now put that money and put it into other trades and uh, when you compound all the money, that's where you can make um, big profits. And um, yeah, so let's see what Pinterest will do in future. Um, okay, I hope that this video helped you to understand my trading approach a little bit better and helped you to gain uh, insights into my research part, which is one of the most important parts for me. And um, yeah, if you want to follow me, you can do that here, of course, on YouTube. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. That's also feedback. And write a comment if you want to. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. And I personally always um, recommend to subscribe to my free newsletter. So I send it out every Sunday with trading tips and three um, stocks from my personal watch list.